My beloved brothers and sisters, the verse that has the most hope in it in the Quran, it is a verse of Surah Az Zumar, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say, O oh, my worshippers who have transgressed against themselves, never lose hope in the mercy of Allah, for indeed He is most forgiving, most merciful. He will forgive all your sins. I want to highlight to you the mercy of Allah. Allah is so merciful that He is addressing the sinful people as, O oh, my worshippers. If Allah was not merciful, He would call the sinful people, O oh, my enemies. He would possibly call them all those who are cursed. But Allah says, Ya ibadi, O oh my worshippers, who have done something wrong? I want you to know I will forgive you, no matter what you have done. For indeed, I am most forgiving, most merciful. So this is the mercy of Allah, that He speaks to us who have sinned against Him, calling us, O oh my worshippers. Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. He will forgive all your sins, for indeed He is most forgiving, most merciful. But then we have one problem. Some people, when they look at that, they start thinking, I can sin and I know Allah is merciful. So in order to avoid that, and another scenario is, when a person says, I have sinned, I know Allah is merciful, but I will seek that forgiveness later on in my life. Not now. I still want to sin a little bit more. Some people think like this. I'm not yet ready to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then Allah says, you, you'd better get back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and surrender to Him very quickly before punishment comes to you and no one will help you. May Allah protect us from earthquakes. May Allah protect us from floods. May Allah protect us from any form of punishment. Not to say that every time there is an earthquake or a flood, it is the punishment. Sometimes it is a test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you have been transgressing against Allah, then indeed it is a punishment. Remember this. You ask yourself, am I a good person? Am I trying to please Allah? Am I seeking the forgiveness of Allah? If the answer is yes, then the negative that comes in your life is not the punishment of Allah. He won't punish you whilst you are seeking forgiveness. But there is an issue where if you are sinful and you are transgressing against Allah and you have no intention of turning to Allah, then when something negative happens to you, it is indeed the punishment, the rod of Allah has now whipped. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So the first type of, of prolonging in sin and not seeking forgiveness, Allah says the punishment may come to you in a way that nobody will be able to help you at all, no matter what and who they are. The second type of punishment, Allah says, follow quickly, follow the best of what is revealed to you. Follow the Quran and the Sunnah. You know, if you ask yourself as Muslims, what do you follow? You must always ask yourself that question. What do you follow? You need to have a specific answer and that answer should be universal from the beginning right to the end. I follow the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah and I follow the Ijma, I follow that which is the consensus of the Muslimin. I follow what I have been taught from Allah's words and from the words of the Messenger If that is true, you will continue asking yourself no matter what you do, what I'm doing, is it what I'm supposed to be following? If it is not, drop it. If it is, strengthen it. Learn more. So Allah says, follow the best of that which has been revealed before punishment overtakes you in such a way that you don't even realize that this was the punishment of Allah and that it will come and it came. Sometimes a person progresses in life, they go higher and higher in terms of wealth and health and authority and everything is improving and increasing. But if he is far from Allah, a day can come when he's at the top that suddenly he crashes and he, he didn't realize that that would happen. So Allah says, you know what? Turn to me before a day comes without realizing you will be wiped out. So this is why 
it is the mercy of Allah when a person becomes old or they are sick or they are terminally ill and they think they are going to die they will be preparing for death because at least it's the mercy of Allah that they know halfway that now I'm not well at all the doctors have given me two weeks to stay and to live you might live for long you might live for many years but at least it gave you a chance to turn to Allah. Allah is tapping you to tell you, hey, start preparing. You are now coming to me, subhanAllah. In a way that is a mercy of Allah. If you don't turn when you are sick and ill and when you are now aging, then you are even worse. May Allah forgive us. Because Allah has given you a reminder and you, you did not take it. But not always does that happen. Sometimes suddenly a man is healthy. While he is sinning, his life is gone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that. If you were to read these verses, inshallah, the end of Surah Zumar, you will find that Allah speaks about those who are arrogant and those who did not turn to Allah, how they will regret when they get to Allah and they will say, Oh Allah, grant us a return. We want to go back. If we had another chance, we would be better people. Allah says, No. My verses came to you, my verses were read to you, but you belied them, you did not want them, you didn't even listen to what was said, it didn't even change you, and you were arrogant, and you were among those who didn't even believe, not at all, you turned away. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who have belied the verses of Allah on the day of judgment, their faces will be darkened, they will be embarrassed, they won't be able to show face. Their faces will be darkened, meaning they will be embarrassed. May Allah not do that to us. And then Allah speaks about the two groups of people. Those who are taken to Jannah and those who are taken to Jahannam. First Allah says, those who will be members of hellfire. They will be taken into hellfire in groups. You and your friends, you go together. Who you used to mix with and who helped you to get to Jahannam, you start going together. So you go in a group into Jahannam and as you get into Jahannam you find the door would have been closed prior to you getting there when you get there the door will be open you go in and the door will be closed again now he's in there forever and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the gatekeepers of Jahannam will ask a question to those who will be going to hell hey did a messenger not come to you reading you some verses of the Quran and verses of Allah reminding you of this day? They will say, yes, indeed. We had few people who came to us reminding us. So what happened? We didn't take them seriously. Then we have those, may Allah make us from those who will enter Jannah. Say, Amen. You have those who shall enter Jannah to Firdaus. Allah says they will also enter in groups. You enter in your group of friends with the Nabi, perhaps who is the one whom you followed and whom you loved the most as we will enter Jannatul Firdaus the gatekeepers will be saying peace be upon you, you have done well enter into Jannatul Firdaus forever and ever and there is a good description Allah says when they get to the door of Jannah they will find it will be wide open waiting for them there are people welcoming you from the gate welcome, welcome they are rushing with you, taking you in to right up to where you have to get to this is the palace so amazing how Allah describes this. How do I know I have been pardoned and forgiven by the Almighty? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, when your good deeds make you happy and make you pleased and your bad actions make you sad and hurt you, then that is a sign of a believer. So the fact that a person has a concern, a, a, a passion to know if he or she has been forgiven, that itself is a positive sign. Now moving forward in terms of answering this academically. So in, in the Quran and Sunnah, we come across two terms and phrases. We have istighfar and we have tawbah. In the 12 Jews in Surah Hud, the advice of Sayyidina Hud alayhi salatu wasalam to his people, istighfiru rabbakum thumma tubu ilayh. Seek repentance to your Lord and seek tawbah. When we merge and marry the two, then that is a sign that Allah has forgiven me. Istighfar is asking Allah for forgiveness for the past and Tawbah is pledging to Allah that I will not revert to it. Now what should be the nature of our Istighfar? Is it just a verbal declaration? Is it just a verbal apology? No, it has to be deeper and it has to be beyond. That when a person makes Tawbah to Allah and he repents, then he's got to feel that. How does he feel it? 
things narrow up upon him is that when we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there must be this sincere guilt. It cannot be a casual commitment or a casual acknowledgement and we persist on the crime. So that is definitely not, not in accordance with sincere tawbah. So that is the first thing. And they realize that there's no hope and amnesty but in Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave them. But here is the beauty of the Quran and the beauty of the forgiveness of the Almighty. The first is Allah says in the hadith of Qudsi that when a servant repents to Allah, Oh my servant, I will forgive you and it doesn't matter to me. I will give you a clean slate and it doesn't matter to me. The second thing is when Allah forgives a sinner, Allah doesn't only remove the hostility that existed due to the sin between the criminal and his creator, but Allah is wadud, Allah is affectionate. So Allah loves the one that repents. Often we become complicit and we stagnate at the level of seeking forgiveness for the past, but we make no pledges for the future. If a person has violated me and offended me and asks of my apology, and I apologize, but I have the slightest hint that he or she will repeat the wrong, then I would withhold my pardon. But when it comes to the Almighty, at the time we repent, we might be sincere, and Allah knows for the fact that due to our fallible nature, at some point we would relapse. But given the fact that we repeat or we repent sincerely for the moment, Allah accepts our apology and Allah accepts our repentance. So like somebody said that we wash our clothes, but we know consciously it's going to get stained again. But we don't stop washing it knowing it's going to get stained. In the very same way we repent and probably due to our fallibility we will resort to sin, but we should not tire repenting. We ask Allah to make us amongst those that are pardoned before we take our last breath.